Do you think it's attractive? Stick around to the end, you might be surprised. For this project I'm using another piece of this uh, very punky maple slab full of spalting. Really beautiful wood, but kind of sketchy to work with. It is kind of ugly to start with here, but you'll see when I flip it over. The spalting patterns are amazing. So nice that I was willing once again to overlook the punkiness of the wood and try and make something from it. Takes a couple of good spins to get it balanced, but this is a great way to find the center. And I used that center point to uh, make this pattern, and you'll see later in the video how well it matched. It's right in the middle. The pattern that I drew uh, was a little bit more complicated and uh, way too narrow for the tools that I had. Uh, I didn't have a straight bit that would reach all the way up until the point of that that star. So once I got it all done and took a good look at it, I changed course and instead of the dividers that you see in there now, I cut everything out and just made it uh, well, a more simple star, and sometimes simple is best. This is just a copper paint, and I thought a really fine layer of copper in between the blue and the wood would look nice. Uh, I'll let you be the judge. It's, frankly, it's really hard to see it, so it didn't make much of a difference. And I'm just mounting the piece uh, to the chuck using a worm screw. And I thought the worm screw would be sufficient because the wood wasn't that heavy. Fairly light, actually. I like these partially see-through shots because you can actually uh, see how the, the tool is resting against the wood, just kind of gliding against the bevel. It's a pretty common uh, phrase to say, ride the bevel when you're wood turning. Um, and I've said it quite a few times as well. But riding the bevel isn't uh, pressing the tool onto the wood surface using a lot of force. It's more gentle than that, if that makes sense. And you can see me doing it wrong in, in some of my videos where I'm just applying too much pressure which is uh, 
uh, causing smoke in some places or or leaving marks on the wood as the tool passes by like polishing marks or, or burn marks so if that's happening to you you might be applying too much pressure or if you're still getting those marks and you know you're not applying that much pressure it's probably just the wood that you're working with that certainly happens quite a bit with the uh, the harder, denser, exotic type woods that you might get from Africa, South America, or or even Australia. just flattening out the foot of the bull and marking it for the mortise. When I reverse mount I'll be using my four jaw chuck in expansion mode which is my preference. I could use a glue block. Many have suggested that I do that but I just prefer doing it this way. A little bit later in this video, I'll be second guessing that decision. There are little pockets of punkiness all over this bowl. So I'm just stabilizing those with some CA glue. Just thin CA glue. So after finishing up the sanding on the base of the bowl, and before we flip it, to start digging out the inside. Let's take a look at this gift that Daniel Kaiser sent me. Just out of the blue, he just decided to send me something, which I really appreciate. So nice. Oh my goodness. This is absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness, thank you. Daniel Kaiser, thank you so much. I will treasure this. Check Odan out on Facebook. You can see some more of his work there. What an amazing gift. Okay, so I've got the bowl reverse mounted. Uh, I think the camera tripod is resting up against the lathe right now, which is causing this shake, but it doesn't last long. So my apologies. I'm able to take these fast passes uh, 
you know, taking off an eighth of an inch at a time or three sixteenths at a time because the wood is so soft and my tools are sharp. And what I'm doing is you know, hogging out this wood, getting down to color, which is usually a happy spot. And then I take down the post. But you'll see here in a second that I was moving a little bit too fast. Oh, that hurts. It hurts to watch. And it's so shocking when it happens. I just completely lost track of the tip of my tool. And it dug right into the heart of the resin. And knocked out some big chips. And I was only 7 sixteenths of an inch deep with the router. So I didn't have a lot of depth to play with. And I just chipped out a whole bunch of it. So I didn't know if this bowl was destroyed or how much repair work I was going to have to do. So all I could do was clean up the area and then take a good look at it. And there it is. You can't really see how deep it is from these shots, but uh, it was too deep uh, to flatten down to. So I just cleaned it up, smoothed it out, and patched it with uh, gold resin. I thought gold would look good mixed in there. Uh, hindsight, I think maybe clear would have been a better choice. But it doesn't look too bad. I'll let you be the judge. All in all, it worked out pretty good. In here, I'm just uh, sealing the wood before I finish it. I just used a basic shellac, fast running. When I put the cardinal directions in, I, I kind of wanted the letters to blend in with the spalting. Which is why they're just outlines and not filled in completely by the wood burner. And it's on the turntable now, so you know the end of the video is coming. But stick around. Because I want to show you why I think this bowl is so attractive. But I do want to thank my subscribers. Thanks so much. Unbelievable. I really appreciate your support. And if you haven't subscribed, come on now. Click that button. I figured since I was making a compass bowl, I might as well make one that can actually find north. So the first thing I had to do was figure out which end of the magnet was attracted to north and then drill the holes in the bowl and then glue the magnets in the right direction and then test it. You can see the compass app on my cell phone off to the side there. And look at that. Look at that bowl turn. I gotta tell you, I was pretty thrilled when it did it. I had doubts. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. It seeks north. The inertia took it a little bit past north, but watch this. It just slowly starts turning back in the other direction. I gotta say, pretty happy with this. Thanks for watching. Semper Fi.